Okay, in this video I'm just going to talk about a couple of HTML elements that can be used for marking up um, text or code or whatever you like um, to use for different circumstances. The sort of things you'd see is you might see, for example, if you've got two words on the page or in a heading, you might see the first um, word is in uh, the primary color, second words in the in black or in the accent color or whatever you want uh, or you might want to surround them with a background color uh, you know if, if they're to be highlighted so there's a couple of tags that are quite underutilized in HTML which we can use for this purpose so the first one I'm going to look at is the mark tag so I'm going to say for mark uh, and I actually put a link to this um, page here in the description so if we look at the mark element, where are we? Here it is. If I click on that. So by default, when you wrap any text in mark, um, most browsers will render that with a yellow background like a marker. And we can change that if we like. So I'm going to talk about how we can do that. Um, the other element, so you can separate these things, is one called slot. I'm just going to look for that. So slot. So basically slot is not used for anything. It just says in here, it's a placeholder which you can fill with your own markup. So it doesn't have any predefined markup. Anyway, so we've got the mark and the slot HTML elements we can work with. So let's jump over to a dummy page. So if I grab this here, if I put in a section here, I'll just chuck some padding on that so we can see it a little bit better. Make it 100 at the top, 100 at the bottom. And I grab a heading. Now this could be anything, this could be a heading, a text box, or text editor, whatever you like. And I'm going to wrap this word here in mark. So, And automatically we get a marker color in the background. Now there's a couple of ways we can redo this. We can actually define classes that sit above this, or we can redefine classes that sit within this, and I'll explain that a bit shortly. So I'm going to grab a text editor, chuck it under here, and what I'm going to do is map, wrap some of this in a mark. So I'll wrap the ipsum in a mark, and I'll wrap maybe this word here in a mark, Okay, so we've got a heading, which has got one mark in it, and we've got a text box, which has got two marks in it. So we can see these by the default styles. So I'm going to look at the first one here. So if I go to mark, and I make that a class of make primary, or color primary, how do we go that? Okay, so we're going to make this a color primary as our class. I'll grab that there and head over to our site settings and custom CSS. I'm going to create a mark dot color primary rule. And in there we're going to make the color of, uh, I can't remember what they are. Let me just quickly check. There's our element of colors, so it's called E Global Primary. So I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to put that in there. So we've made the color primary. We just want to make the background color. And I might actually rename this class as well. So I'll make that uh, BG so it makes more sense. And then we'll have to change that over there. Okay, so let's grab that rule. Duplicate that, and we'll call that secondary. Make this secondary. 
and make this one accent. Okay, so we've got three rules, BG color, primary, secondary, and accent. Coming back to here, and I'm going to add that class there as BG, ah, sorry, didn't copy properly, BG color uh, primary. Okay, I'm going to background a primary now. Let's say we want to wrap a, another word. Let's make the about word. And we'll make that the secondary. So my secondary colors are gray here. And we'll just add that last one. And we'll make that a mark of around the word here. And we'll make that one accent. So we've got the background as accent. So it's a very, very simple way of uh, adding classes to um, change the the display of that mark uh, markup or the HTML element for mark. Um, and that's just one way of doing it. Now I'm going to undo all this. Um, just going to copy that text here and just make it back to the to that. I'm going to change the way this works. I'm going to put just the mark around the heading again, and I'm not going to give it any class name here. And then we're going to go up to the advanced. We have a class name of BG, say mark, BG, so mark BG color primary. Okay, and I'll head over back to, uh, what did I do there? I didn't close that mark, so I just want that on the heading. Head back over to my CSS. I'm going to redo this rule. Uh, sorry, my custom CSS for this site. I'm going to make a new rule here, and I'm going to call that mark BG color primary, and basically copy the mark up there, and there we go. So mark BG color primary, and then mark. So we want to target the class name of the widget that's on the widget, which is the mark BG color primary, and then the mark HTML element. So we could change that to, now we're going to make another one of those, a secondary. Uh, accent. Okay. Save that. Okay. Now, if I grab the class from there and I put that on my text widget, it's doing the same thing. If I want them to be secondary, or make an accent actually, make an accent, they're going to be the accent color. So simple as that to get control of this. If you don't want to do that, what we can do is individually on each of these, because of the markup we've done, I'll say I'll make this one class equals uh, BG color accent. Okay. And then we'll add a mark around the other one. This one here, the consequer, so whatever it is. Uh, and we'll make that primary. So we can mix and match them within the text editor by using this methodology where we're putting a class on the actual mark. 
or we can actually put the class above that on the entire widget so that it applies to every mark without actually having to identify a, a class on the mark. So if you just wanted the same color for anything that you want highlighted anywhere in that text widget, uh, I would put it on the actual text widget. Or you could even put it above that on the column or on the section or whatever you want, everything below that, it'll apply to that mark. So that's a really, really easy way of just marking this up. Okay, so that's the first one. So that's dealing with our marks. I'll just zoom in a little bit so I can grab the edge of that. Just grab that into another section. This drag and drop doesn't always work the way you would expect it to work in Elemental, but that's okay. It's not really an Elemental thing, it's more of the browser behavior. Okay, so I'm going to change this mark up here. Instead of using that, I'm going to use the word slot. Keyword slot. Okay, and in here, I'm going to do the same. Oops. Okay, so now we're using slot here instead of uh, mark. Now mark, remember mark puts a yellow highlight behind it unless we redefine that background color. Slot has zero markup. So it does nothing whatsoever. So let's see what we can do with that. Let me go back to my site settings. Where are we? Site settings, CSS. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate all of these, but instead of being mark, I'm gonna use the word slot. And take out the BG because we're just going to do the color of the actual text. Okay, so now we've got a duplicate of these classes up here based on the slot element where we're going to just set the actual color, not the background color. Okay, so I'm going to grab this, uh, sorry, that should be slot. Okay. Update that. Now, let's have a look at my heading. So in the content, I've still got a slot there. So if I add my slot color primary, there we go. If I make that accent, it does that there as well. So let's have a look here. I think I took the markup I did, took it out of there. We don't have any slots in there whatsoever. That's a bit strange if I go slot. Um, just on the lorem. Okay, and then we go to the advanced and stick that on the CSS class. It's now made the lorem the primary color. Okay, if we add another slot to the Ahmet. Okay, so that's interesting. The editor here seems to be stripping out the slot so that's something to do with element or it's stripping out that element. I'm not sure why, uh, which is not ideal. Because it looks like it's still there, but it's just not showing it. I'm just going to update this. Just do an F5 and see if it's still there. Okay, so it's definitely still there, but in the editor, when you switch to the visual 
sorry, from uh, visual to text, it's dropping out the slot, um, which is not great. I'm just going to try something here. I'm going to try it with a space in there. Okay, so it's doing exactly the same thing. Switch to visual, switch to text, and it switched, and it just basically messes things up. Oh, that's no good. So I think in the text editor, it's going to be hard to use slot. Uh, in here, you can use it because it's not messing it up. But the visual editor switching between visual and text is going to mess this up, so we can't really use slot in here. Where we could use it is in anything else. So if we have, for example, an icon list, and I'll put that there, and I add the uh, on the number, if I put slot, in there, and then on the advanced, actually we'll go to the entire widget, here we are, color primary slot. There we go, so you can see, just go back to there. So when I press control plus it goes into the uh, side settings. So if we want that to be accent, we can change that to and the changes to the accent. So we can use this on anything that doesn't switch between the visual editor and text, uh, because that's just gonna mess it up. So in here, you can use that wherever you like. So let's say, for example, I have another item here, and I want to make on item two, I wanna make the word list slot. Now the word list is the accent because we've applied that rule to the whole to the whole uh, icon list widget. So it's an easy way of just controlling your colors for specific parts of text, um, but uh, it's quite unutilized. And I think Elementor is probably stripping out slot uh, because it's not a very commonly used uh, HTML element, so it's probably not on their list of uh, stuff to allow. Um, so the only caveat is here is it looks like you can't use it in the um, a text editor because it will strip it out when you switch between text and visual. Uh, but you certainly can use mark in there, but it doesn't strip out the mark, so that's fine. So you can keep using that. So hopefully that um, gives you some tools that you can use that make it really, really easy for defining properties for slot, properties for mark, and using them wherever you like. I had one example, which I haven't made live yet, where I wanted some optional options in a price list, and uh, what I did is I created slot with a class called um, optional, and then I just wrapped those options on the uh, on the repeater for the um, price list, then around a slot with a class equals um, option, and that worked perfectly well for me so hopefully that's useful and um, you can uh, do something with that